G'day you good motherfuckers, this is an interesting story. Transgender athlete Hannah Mouncy, who in 2013 played at the Men's Handball Championship in Spain, who stands 6 foot 3, which is about up to here on me, and weighs almost as much as me, who also bench presses 150 fucking kilos and squats over 200 kilos, is planning to sue an Australian football code after they didn't allow her to play in the female competition. But more on that in just a little while. Let me just jump in before everyone starts freaking out in the trans community that I'm attacking transgender people. No, that is not what I'm doing in this video at all. If you are like Hannah and you are transitioning from male to female or female to male or you're hanging out in the middle and you're floating around, all the power to your sister, brother or whatever you want me to call you. You do you, do whatever you want to do. Fuck whoever you want, as long as it is not hurting anybody. I do not give a flying fuck. But unfortunately, when it comes to sport, having a transgender athlete playing against biological women, people can get hurt. That is a fact, and there is no way getting around that. Oh, and by the way, completely off topic, if you go to my Instagram, at the Buttsman, and go and find the thumbnail of this video, which I posted now, you will go into the draw. All you have to do is comment below the thumbnail, right? Hey, you prick, send me some merch, or oi, dickhead, send me some merch. And ladies and gentlemen, of those people who comment and follow me on the gram, I'll pick five winners and I'll announce them on my Instagram story. But now, back to the video. Transgender MMA fighter has said she wants a license to fight. Ah, uh, this all fucking sucks. Uh, it really does because these aren't bad people. These are people who are just trying to live their best lives and move on with their lives after their transition. And I respect that and I really do wish them all the best. I fucking hate it when people say I hate transgender people. It's fucking bananas. But there's something very unfair when it comes to previously male people, now female people, competing in female sports. It's just something unfair about it. It doesn't happen the other way around though, which is sort of a little bit funny. Like there's no previously female people, now male people competing against men and fucking dominating. As soon as that happens, I'll shut the fuck up. I will shut the fuck up. If you were once a man and lived your life as a man and then became a woman and compete against women, you have an advantage. There's no hiding from that. There are currently approximately 10,000 men in the United States alone that can run faster than the fastest woman over 100 meters. 10,000. Serena Williams, the best, the greatest tennis player of all time in the female division, wouldn't even be ranked in the top 500 when it comes to the best men playing tennis right now. But of course there are people who disagree with me, mainly on Twitter, shall we? A few notes on women and girls who are trans in sports. There is a relentless effort to situation trans people as a threat to cis people in sport and elsewhere. There is simply no threat. I disagree, but I'll get to that. The foundation of those arguments are based on two dangerous and faulty premises. First, that men and boys are always better, stronger, faster, and more skilled than women and girls. Well, on average they are, but anyway, whatever. Second, that sex categories are binary, fixed, and easily identifiable at birth. Well, in most cases, 99.9% .9 they are, but anyway. Both of these premises are rooted in misogyny and white supremacy. You can tell this person's a fucking idiot. The interest behind these narratives is not protecting women, but rather protecting the power of the state to control people's bodies and constrain people's identities. That's fucking hilarious, mate. I don't know anything about you, but I, I don't want to know anything about you. You sound like a fucking idiot. They said that there is no threat. And I sort of agree to some extent. I don't think there is a threat to women in women's sports from transgender athletes. They're not going out there to hurt them. Well unless it's a contact sport, which is really the only one that I give a shit about. If you're a transgender athlete and you're running 100 meter races and you're beating the women, or you're not, I don't give a fuck. Or you're throwing shot puts, I don't give a fuck. Or you're doing high jumps, who gives a fuck, right? But when you are doing things like competing in MMA and living most of your life as a man and then beating the fuck out of women, 
I have an issue with that. Or playing rugby league, right? I played rugby league for 17 years. I guarantee you, and this is not a call out, but, <laughs> but I guarantee you that I could fucking destroy the Australian women's rugby league team. Sorry, it's just fucking true. The same goes for sports like AFL, NFL, boxing, or anything where people are coming into contact with each other. There are a lot of sports out there where there is an imminent threat of danger, fucking injury, or even death. And that is where I have an issue with people who have lived their entire lives as men then competing against women. I don't think that's outrageous to say. If you live most of your life as a man and then become a woman, even though you change your hormones, you will have had an extraordinary amount of physical advantages given to you because you were a man. For example, men on average have a heavier skeletal mass than women. This matters when you're getting punched in the face. Biomechanically speaking, men have longer legs, which in turn allows them to grow more muscle on those legs. A man's leg on average is 80% muscle whereas a woman's is only 60%. Mass times acceleration equals a fuck ton more force. That's why in male sports the collisions are bigger. That's just it. Women also tend to have wider hips which means they're not as efficient at running as men. I'm not being sexist here, this is fucking biology. Which I know a lot of you freak out about anyway, but men also have bigger hearts. Men also have more red blood cells, which allows more oxygenated blood to get to muscles and perform better. Women on average have smaller lungs than men too, meaning their maximal oxygen consumption, their VO2 max is lower. That's from the Journal of Medicine and Science in Sport and Exercise. I know this is all biology, and I know that biology is a myth, but hear me out. These are fucking facts that you cannot get away from, and this is why it is unfair for transgender women to play sports or compete in sports or fight women. It's, I'm sorry, I know it sucks, and it must fucking suck to, to be in your position. I cannot imagine that, but that is the truth of the matter. Which brings me to Hannah Mouncey. Transgender footballer Hannah Mouncey is planning legal action against the AFL and its gender diversity policy in an attempt to play top level footy in Canberra. Mouncey was not allowed to enter the AFL women's draft in 2017, but was permitted to play at the VFL level. That's fucking weird. Why would you, why would you allow her to do one thing but not the other? Maybe she does have a case. Um, against the AFL. Her concerns are based around the policy surrounding trans athletes. Testosterone levels have to be below five nanomoles, something moles, for up to two years prior, which is actually twice than the highest level of female athletes. But whatever, that doesn't really matter. The transgender athlete has been reaping the benefits of testosterone for years. What's another two years? Other parts of the policy included height and weight, bench press testing, and other periodic testing, which is strange. I don't know why that matters, because there are women that are stronger than other women, and it's a very strange and sort of hairy-fairy area, if you will. But this isn't Hannah's first time in front of the world's eyes. She was on a 60 Minutes episode just a couple of years ago. At six foot two, weighing 100 kilos and blessed with a mighty kicking boot, Hannah Mouncey should have been a shoe-in to play at the elite level of the women's Aussie rules competition. But late last year, the AFL said no. Again, said no, but then said they can play in another competition. That really confuses me. Either it's a no or a yes. Simple. Deciding she was too much of a physical threat to her opponents. Hannah believes there's another reason, though. The fact she was born a boy not a girl. Well, obviously, but also she was born a boy, grew up as a boy and lived many years as a man. Went to the world championships as a man, was an athlete as a man. Then became a woman, which is wonderful, mind you. But I just think you're being a bit disingenuous in the way you're phrasing that opening statement. They don't want me involved. They never wanted me to involved and they never wanted me to play. So, you know, I mean, if they everything they did to wear me down and basically get me and me being the problem to, to go away, they did. And that must be heartbreaking for you, Hannah. And it must be for a lot of transgender athletes facing these difficulties as well. But the fact of the matter remains that you have a distinct advantage over the biological women that you're competing against. And that is, but it sucks. It just sucks. It sucks, all right? That's all it does. It sucks for you and them and all that type of stuff. But you cannot escape the facts in this situation. Having a much larger former male person competing against women who don't sign up for that particular thing. If you want to sign up for it and allow Hannah to come in, cool, wonderful, fantastic. But if they don't sign up for it, then I understand why they would be concerned. 
Um, As Hannah sees it, the problem the AFL has with her is simple. She used to be Callum. He was also an elite athlete and even played handball for Australia. But in 2015, Callum became Hannah. 2015, late 2015, okay? Almost 2016, and Hannah was born in 1989, which means for the first 27 years of her life, she reaped the rewards, particularly after puberty, of testosterone and built her body into a fucking giant's body. <laughs> for over a quarter of a century, she benefited from having a male's endocrine system. She benefited from it. It was like taking some type of performance enhancing drug. She benefited from that. But ladies and gentlemen, I really want to know your opinion on this video because I don't want to go on. I don't want to be just a piece of shit and attack this one person. I just want to know what you think down below in the comment section. Let's, let's sort of try and work this out because I think obviously Hannah needs to she wants to play sport, she should be allowed to play sport. Do you have a competition just for transgender athletes? But there's not enough transgender athletes to maintain a competition. Do you have uh, the women sign a waiver? Is there insurance issues? Is Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. But also, make sure you head to the Instagram of The Buttsman, it's a great time. And The Buttsman 2 on YouTube, I'm uploading three videos there every single week as well. So if you haven't got your weekly fix, fucking go there now and... Subscribe, you bastards. Be a good motherfucker. Peace in the middle, least me dick stinks. Keep it moist. Toodle-wop-wop. Bye.